Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. I've been wanting to add an electric starter to one of these Predator 212cc uh, motor motors for a while. I actually have a spot to bolt it onto. This is my repowered Kawasaki mule and it doesn't have electric start. And you guys can see the Predator motor all the way down there. So to fire it up, I get to tilt the seat, lift the bed, do call all kinds of amazing things that are pesty. So I just as soon get this thing to electric start status. So you can buy the kit on eBay for a hundred bucks, give or take um, ten bucks, depending on if it's on sale or not. So obviously it comes with a starter, a dashboard. It's the back of the dashboard, a cover with the uh, cutout for the starter. Right. Hopefully it's tight enough to keep mice out. You got your charging coil here. Um, your flywheel with the gear on it and hardware. So now that you've seen all that, what don't you see? You do not see the instructions because it didn't come with any. So very quickly, I had this off, on and start, off, run and start positions. And I traced out what things look like given the wire collar and what they were shorted to in the various positions. And then I figured out where they went. And here's where they belong. The green yellow goes to ground. The red wire, this one here, goes to the same lug as the battery is going to go to. So the battery lug on the starter. Brown goes to the charge coil. Black is the engine on and off and they have a couple of different places here I guess so you can have a remote off switch though um, I think once you put this cover on that switch has to get out of the way and the black and white is goes to the starting solenoid this black and white goes to um, that black and white and it's interesting I, after going through the wiring diagram I'm like oh man how does the coil charge the battery so as you feed alternating power into that coil there right you'll see something interesting you actually go through a diode then it's soldered together with the red wire right there brown turns into diode turns into white turns into red goes out to the starter lug and from the starter lug it goes to the starter and it also goes to your battery remember this is where the battery lead is also hooked up so the brown wire AC comes in on it, it goes through the diode, and you get a half wave charging circuit. You get a pulse charging circuit. This situation probably is good for, I don't know, a quarter amp of charge, a half amp of charge. Really, not a lot of power. So, we're, you know, you're looking at somewhere between three, six, Maybe you make it all the way up to 12 watts. You really, you know, you really don't have a lot of charging power here. So think about that as you're doing whatever you're doing with your electrical circuit. You probably want to make sure that if you do put lights on whatever this thing is powering, that you use LED lights and uh, keep the wattage down. Um, if not, you're going to be running your battery down and you're going to be really challenging the charge circuit. Anyway, let's install this. Hopefully it's fall off a log easy and uh, <laughs> we fire this thing up in a matter of minutes. This is a brand new engine. Never got oil, never got started. I don't think I've even pulled the string. Um, but unfortunately I had to borrow the carburetor off of it. I needed a carburetor quickly and I just, I just stole it. So first thing I got to do is get a functional carburetor on this. Okay, to do the starter 
first thing you got to do is get the gas tank off right one bolt there and then you got two here and they keep swapping back and forth between eight millimeter and ten millimeter so be ready for that now for the cover one two three four and three bolts on this moves the recoil over to the red one so simple enough all right the cover is loose all the bolts are out I just wanted to take a second to show you guys how this is wired this turns the coil off right so it goes to here it basically grounds it and this has to do with the um, the uh, low oil right when the oil's low um, it too shuts it down so there you go and that's why that guy has a double plug on it anyway covers off good next up comes the bolt to the flywheel I already loosened it um, counterclockwise do not go clockwise you'll split the flywheel or break the end of the crank off so counterclockwise um, gently tap it off use the lowest uh, setting you can and once again gently <laughs> tap it off don't smash your impact wrench right up to the highest setting and go ripping on it because if you're not in reverse once again you're going to do damage all right i already popped this and i used the two sc screwdriver technique one down here and i leaned on it one up here i leaned on it so you're kind of balancing the engine on the two screwdrivers i put the bolt on right and put it on all the way so that it was protected then I just tap this with a hammer this is a brand new engine so it popped right off sometimes as they get older you got to use a puller or something unfortunately this flywheel and this flywheel are not tapped so you got to kind of sneak a two draw puller in and pull it that way even when I use a puller I have a tendency to put a bolt on it so as you tighten up against this, you don't mushroom it and make a mess. So there you go. Okay, a few things. First of all, I bolted on the charging coil. And you see how I put the wire down under. Now they got new plates that have to go on here. And that's because the starter is going to be in the way. So this old plate has to come off. Right, so get that out of the way. Um, and once again, this is going to bolt on. However it goes, it'll take me a minute to suss it about this guy too. Um, so you got that. And let me do that, then we'll look at the flywheel. Now it appears as if the order on how you do some of this stuff is very important. You want to get the guards off, first of all. These are two standoffs, they include it. And those are kind of important because the starter kind of hangs on to those, right? You can see the standoff there and the one down there. And once again, the starter hangs off of them. And then you're going to put a bolt through. And that's how the starter is going to be on here. Anyway, uh, remember, I put the shims, sleeves, bushings, whatever you want to call it in. Slip the starter on. Put the two bolts on. Right, here's the plate they include. You can see that one bolt holds it. And then when you put the cover on, there'll be another bolt down here. So, that's done. Looks like the starter's on. Um, there's this extra plate. Somehow, I'm thinking it goes around here somewhere. And the bolt that goes to it... But I'm not sure at this point, so I'm not installing it. I think this wire is pretty good. It's got the extra sleeve on it, so it shouldn't cut through. It's not like it's carrying all that much current anyway. So I slipped the flywheel in. Pay attention to the keyway. You don't want to push it in and drop it. Hook it to the magnet and cause yourself trouble, right? And not have things locked together as this is nicely. So anyway, it's on. you got to get the spark um, coil 
out of the way otherwise you're fighting magnets and it's got to be regapped and all anyhow so just get that out of the way for now I'm gonna put these things on in a loose fashion I don't want to tighten anything down too much because I want to make sure I run out of parts and pieces and everything's out of the way and then I'll and then I'll finish smashing that I'll tighten this up and go for the cover and all as you're putting things together take note that everything is kind of keyed so make sure you key it all together so that the plastic fan clamps down tight against the flywheel and your starter pulley or basket as I like to call it steps in right you got that little divot there that has to go in the right spot so I used my four sheets of paper technique to gap this I've actually measured this out I don't remember the exact reading but it was pretty close so once again I put the magnet where this was with four pieces of paper right this is folded four times um, tighten this down so that's gapped properly I've turned this around a couple of times right to the compression stroke of course just to make sure that it's not rubbing or hitting um, it's not rubbing and hitting on the inside either so um, I'm about to tighten this down probably I'll test fit the cover to make sure there's nothing I forgot <laughs> that means I gotta tear it all apart again to install so I tightened up the crank bolt don't forget to do that your flywheel will come loose and cause all kinds of trouble I got the cover bolted on which is all very nice um, this is the critter that um, sensors your oil and hits your off circuit this is the off circuit right so you just plug all this stuff back in the way it was before on the other cover you're using this switch instead of the switch externally right I told you the red wire goes to the battery terminal on the starter right this wire with the cover on it yellow with the white cover goes into the brown which goes into the diode which eventually goes into here which goes out to there the battery once it's hooked up right the um the white and black that when you energize it when you turn this on the power goes into here it engages the starter relay and it goes so that's all the wiring right it's really pretty easy everything is plug and play all the bolts were correct the shims were correct everything was exactly as it should be i don't think there are any surprises or spare parts except for this little guy and I don't know <laughs> maybe it actually goes here right um, I really can't see anywhere else it would go so other than this and that <laughs> uh, I think I found just about everything this guy goes in here when the gas tank is on I'm not gonna put the gas tank on yet I want to see if uh, if it's gonna work right make sure there's no grinding or bad sounds then we'll put a little gas in it fire it up and see where we go from there so powers hooked up once again um, battery lug has battery positive frame has negative right we got nothing and then turn to run which enables the spark and then turn to start <laughs> look at that it even works um let's put some gas in guys I almost forgot the oil would that have not been in incredibly painful and stupid before I fire this up for real I'm just gonna put a few shots of oil into it right pre-oiling the cylinder and the rings and everything else never hurts um, maybe it even helps this is a brand new engine so I'm just gonna turn it over for a second make sure that it pumps oil through itself 
that the oil I put in the head is lubricating a few things. And now we're ready for plug, gas, and start. Okay, here we are, ready for a nice cold start. On, on, gas, choke, and hopefully start. How is that? What do you think? Um, obviously a little smoke because I put smoke in the cylinder, but boy, she fires right up and she runs real nice. So it cost about a hundred bucks, give or take ten, um, to put to buy the starter kit. Um, the Predator motor for me it was one of those $79 specials from a number of years ago. I mean, I think they're $129. Nowadays, you're just stuck there. So for one twenty nine, plus another hundred for two twenty nine, you have an electric start. You can buy them already with the electric starter um, off of eBay about for two fifty delivered, give or take a little bit. If you don't want to go through any of the labor, so you can uh, you can always do it that way if you wish. I'm going to keep the gas tank and air filter off for now. Because once again, I want to move this motor over to the um, to the other machine. I'm hoping that the electric starter does not interfere with the uh, torque converter, right? That would be a pest. Um, though I think the torque converter hangs off this side of the motor, if I recall properly. Um, there's another thing you could also do, right? So you got your basic Predator motor. You can add the electric starter. You can add the torque converter. And you could also add a reverse gear, which um, makes this like a very universal engine. You have um, a torque converter for a transmission. You have forward and reverse for the gearbox on that transmission. You have electric start. And it's easy enough to cable this thing up. Um, from the point of view of the throttle this thing would Cause some creativity to cable up the choke, right? Though you could probably slip on one of those um, GY6 carburetors with the electric choke and get around it that way Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I um, really appreciate everyone who's watched everyone who subscribed to my channel, and everyone who takes the, uh, the time to comment. Um, been a crazy busy summer, so I haven't been very good about responding to comments, but do know that I read them, and I want to respond. All I need is some time. All right, once again, folks, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.